All right, Mike. All right. So I did actually want to get an answer uh, from the question Shawty uh, asked you, which is, what do you think about the wigger? And I have a definition prepared for you since you didn't okay. want to take her question. So, but I didn't, I didn't know what she meant. And then um, you guys are coming from somewhere where y'all throwing the word wigger around. So what's, what's a wigger? Define that for me, please. So a wigger is a white person who embraces a certain cultural as, uh, affect of African-American culture as it's displayed in popular media and generally wants to give an air of, of a masculine presence. Oh, okay. So, okay. But so the woman wants to give him, cause she said she was a wigger. So the woman wanted to have a masculine presence. So yeah. For, so it depends. Most of the time a wigger is defined as a white dude. Whereas a, uh, I think a woman saying that she's a wigger is more embracing of the, uh, black cultural affect plus, um, some of the more feminine aspects of black culture. Okay, now so it's said, different. Okay, now let's let's unpack that. You said now what's in the popular media? Now what image of black people are in the is in the popular media? Oh no, I think uh, so, something that would be popular popularized like the music from Beyonce or the music of Kanye. It's it's typically um, music. <clears throat> so if somebody likes Beyonce, they're a wigger. No, 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 no. If they embrace some of the cultural affect of these popular black individuals. Like what? What's the cultural affect? Uh, I would say I, I would say slang or the, the way that they approach uh, social interaction uh, in terms of, of having a uh, da, 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 maybe a more uh, rigorous way of feeling other people out it's a it's a more i guess hostile or not hostile but a more sensitive way of feeling other people out in uh social situations feeling like really like how how because i'm black and i'm this is very new to me and i've been black for a long time I'm no learning- I'm, I'm just telling you how how i see it as like how white people who want to be wiggers embrace it Okay, I'm, I'm trying to understand what they're embracing and what's, how do we have these cultural affects of hostility and aggression when we enter, enter, and interact with people? I'm, I'm, re- I'm lost, brother. You got to really unpack this for me. I'm learning something. No, no, because I think that's simple enough. Like, just what do you think about white people trying, uh, even if they're misguided, Right, trying to embrace a African American affect in how they interact socially. So is um, Randy Travis, the country singer, is he a wigger? Because he's embracing a black affect, which is country music. That's black. That came from black people. Is he a wigger? No, I wouldn't say so because it's not. It's not the simulated image. It's not what you get on the TV screen of black culture. Oh, so what do you get on the the TV screen and which TV screen? Because no, it, like BET. Like if you just approach everything like you're on a BET TV show. Oh, so oh, so how white people portray because BET is white. So you mean how white people portray black people? Exactly. Oh, so that has nothing to do with us. That's your own stereotypes. That has nothing to do with black culture. That's white cherry picking certain things to fit a stereotype. It has zero to do with black culture. So, so what, how does that make a wigger someone who embraces that that stereotype of culture? What what do you think of that person? Oh, that makes them probably a suspected white supremacist if they're embracing another white person's perception of a black person that usually has some kind of negative or undertone. That makes them a suspected white supremacist, as far as I'm concerned. I think that's a fair enough answer. I won't right. take up any more of your time. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you are somebody engaging in stereotypes from a white network like BET, and if that's your ideal of blackness, yeah, I'm, I suspect you're being a white supremacist. And if you heard me before, a white person using yo, 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 word to the mother slang, y'all know I don't like that. 
let me let me be very clear. Y'all, some of y'all are new booty. And some of y'all are very new. So where are my riders who've been riding with me for a long time? And I've been around for a minute. And I've been saying this for decades. The yo, yo, yo word to the mother white people cannot be trusted. I don't trust them worth a damn. If you're running around here talking that stuff, I don't trust you. Look at Michael Rappaport. Yeah, y'all were inviting him to the barbecue. I've been telling people for years. I'm Michael Rappaport, man. You let him keep talking. He was yo, yo, yo word to the mother for years. Now he sounds like Richard Spencer. You let these people fool you. Hell, even MC Search. You look at interviews he does now. He sounds real conservative now. All that yo, yo, yo shit going right out the window. Some of the alt-right dudes were yo, 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 word to the mother at one point. Uh, what's that? Baked Alaska. I think baked, wasn't Baked Alaska a rapper at one point? I think Baked Alaska was one of them yo, yo, yo people. Now look at him. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't co-sign any of those stereotypes, all that yo, yo, yo stuff, because that's not really how we do. You think? Those are things that make the suspected white supremacists comfortable. Most black people, man, we, we chop it up like we're chopping it up now. Yeah. We chop it up the way we chop it up. That's why you notice the white supremacists call up. We can immediately tell when you're trying to pretend to be black. Because when we sit around and chop it up like this, we don't do all that old performative yo, 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 hey, nigga. That's performative. We don't do that. That's why you got to update your stereotypes. We can tell some of you ain't really been around no black people. That's why I wanted him to define what a wigger was. Because wiggers are people who are usually not around black folks like that. Yeah. All right, let's get some more people in here. Um, Marm, that's an interesting name. Sir, hop on. Marm. Mr. Marm, hop on. Waiting on Marm. And we're going to give you five seconds, Marm. And then we're going to go to Dejuwala. I think that's your name. I can't pronounce your name. Three seconds, Marm. And the Jula, whatever your name is, hop on, sir. Yeah, it's the Jula, man. What's going on? I got a two. I got a two prong question for you, brother. Uh, the first one would be, how do you feel about um the rise of these black conservatives, and also how do you feel about the rise of the black nationalists. I'm seeing a lot of it on my timeline recently. I actually think I align with them, a lot of my views. Um, I just was trying to see, you know, just get your temperature, check your temp real quick, see how you felt about that. Right. Now, as black nationalists, what kind of black nationalists? Because that's kind of a catch-all term, and it could mean a gazillion different things. I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the fellas, um, I'm seeing the black men who are just embracing that American culture, um, embracing this being our country embracing right. no okay. you know not fleeing you know just sitting here putting our our, our feet in the mud and just getting this together you know what i mean there you go okay now that makes sense okay let me answer that because yes sometimes people start talking about black nationalism and then they be talking about we need to move to wakanda and all of that so that's why we got to define what that means so yeah we're we're embracing our um foundational black american culture <laughs> which is a great thing we should have been doing that a long time ago that's a phenomenal thing. Um, and then the brother, I forgot what the, wait, what was the first question this guy asked me? I forgot. <laughs> you and me, I forgot. My fine wife is in here. My wife is looking real sexy, looking real fine. Looking like a whole little snack over here. Looking like an island gal. <laughs> looking like she's been on the beach somewhere. Um, uh, what are the, the brother, the first question he asked me what I think about black conservatives, right? Um, yeah, the black conservatives. Um, and look, I'm conservative in many respects, but you have performative conservatives like these Negroes out here trying to get 
a couple of dollars from white supremacists. Hey, what what about black on black crime? Yeah, that's something else. That's not real conservatism. That's just some Negroes bug dancing for a couple of dollars. So that's different. That's that's in bad faith. So I don't even acknowledge that as real conservatism. That's performative. All right, let's see who we got because we are in the building. I hope everybody go to rootworkstyle.com to get the rootwork deodorant. Since we do have a lot of um, alt-right people in here, some of your scents smell a little different living in trailer homes. So we got um, some pure vanilla that will penetrate all of that trailer must. Go to rootworkstyle.com. I suggest the pure vanilla for some of you alt-right people, okay? Um, some of the brothers and sisters out here, we got that Lucky Lavender. That's very, very good and goes on very smooth. The deodorant is all natural. It's aluminum-free, and it has the High John the Conqueror root in it. And that was something that was very important in foundational Black American culture. Um, it, it, it brought us a lot of good energy. All right. I don't know if the high, the high John might work on some of the alt-right people. Um, it might bring you more meth in your life. I don't know. Whatever you want. I, it, I think it would be more constructive. Um, I, it, it might make some of the headlights fall out. It's It, it will do good things for you energy-wise. It'll get your chakras together. So rootworkstyle.com. Now, let me get some more people in here. Mr. Lee. Let's get Mr. Lee. Got the brother in here, Mr. Lee. Hop on. Mr. Lee, you ready? All right, Mr. Lee, we're waiting on Mr. Lee. While we're waiting on Mr. Lee, let's get Zen in here. Zen, hop on. All right, while we're waiting, oh, wait, somebody's coming in. Who's that, Lee? Mr. Lee? Yes, sir. What's going on, brother? I hear uh, you, sir. First of all, did you say did you say MC Search is now conservative? Well, he sounds conservative. I didn't say he, he sounds very conservative now. Oh, in what way? I haven't, I haven't heard anything from him in years. Well, yeah, he's done some interviews on... Um, a, a couple of platforms. I know he was on a, a brother's show, Gus T. Renegade, and Gus is a, a a real thorough activist, and he was kind of grilling MC Search about systematic racism and things like that, and Search was kind of splaining a little bit. So if you guys can go and do some research on some of those interviews, that would be great. Now, Mr. Lee, what's all that noise going on in the background, sir? Is everything okay with you? Is there noise in the background? Yes, sir. I'm sitting in front of my laptop and there's no noise. Um, okay. I wanted to also talk talk some more about the uh, black conservatives. Um, what do you think about uh, Snoop Dogg just recently giving Donald Trump props? Well, what does that have to do with conservatism? I don't think that's him being conservative. He's just giving um, Trump props. A lot of people are kind of shouting Trump out. But that, I don't think that's making them conservative. Are, are you a Trump supporter? What, what, what's your political views? No, um, I'm not a Trump supporter. No, I don't want to say I, I'm a uh, Democrat, but I, I I share a lot of beliefs with them. Right, uh, probably but immigration. Where did where, where did you where did you and your family immigrate from? What part of Africa? Uh, I can't pinpoint exactly where. Um, Bantu people. Uh, I show Ben in. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. I didn't say the DNA test. I didn't say your 23 and me test. Your family. <laughs> no, 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 no. Where did your family come from in Africa when they immigrated here? Yeah, I have no clue. If you could help me How with that, you... I would love it, but I have no clue. Oh, no, no, no. What do you mean you don't have no clue? That don't make no sense, sir. Where they immigrated from? Where did they immigrate here from? Before they came sir, to America. Is that what you asked me? Sir, <laughs> you don't 
<laughs> you don't have to be ashamed of your background. It's okay. You don't have to be ashamed of it. So we, I already know you're foreign. I, I hear your would, accent, sir. I can hear your accent. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? I hear, I hear your accent, sir. Nobody. There is no accent. A boy is, is in Los Angeles. But I hear your Look accent, dude. Look at my page. I can see you. That, Sir, the banner is me. No, I. The banner is. I know. Listen, the bet. <laughs> no, you. I see that forehead, sir. Where are you from? This is what I'm saying. Where's your family? I, I see that you, forehead. If, I'm looking at you in the forehead of the accent, sir. <laughs> you're in there cooking some goddamn jollof now. What part of Africa no. are you from? Where your family immigrated here, sir? Nigeria. I'm 45% Nigerian. When did your family immigrate here from Africa, sir? Whenever they were brought here on the slave ships. No, don't know. I don't believe that, sir. You got... Really? Sir, I will listen. You're, sir, you're not a foundation of Black Americans, sir. Listen, dude. I don't have no problem showing it to you. My DNA test. We hear your accent. No, we don't. Do you do you think you're <laughs> fooling us? Do you think you're blending in? See, that's the thing about y'all, man. Y'all think y'all blend in more than you do. We we hear you. You're funny. You're funny. We, we hear you. Do we know you're not a foundational black American, sir? And that's okay. I'm not judging you. you. You're hilarious. I'm not, not judging you. I was born you, in Hawthorne, California. I, I, that's fine. But that doesn't mean you're a foundational black American. You Bro. keep that, That's why we you know the, the way you're wording things is is trying to be deceptive. I was born in it. We, a, a lot of people who come from Immigrant backgrounds always talk about where they were born. No, no, no. Where's your family from? I got very specific about that. Yeah. Don't be, listen, don't be ashamed of your family. Just say, hey, I want to do better. I, I'm here to do better for my family. Y'all cut that I'm out. Not, I'm not ashamed. You I'm are. Ashamed. But listen. You are. No, 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 no. If you would like, if you would like to help me pinpoint that, I would, Bob, Bob, I would love Bob, it if you would Bob, do that. No, no, but I, I can't help you if you're going to sit here and be deceptive. Uh, you know where your family Dude, is from. I'm not being deceptive. I told you, you. I'll show you my DNA test. You know where your family... I don't want to see a DNA test. You know where your family immigrated from. Come here, sir. And you're ashamed of it. See, that's not... How cool. many different ways can I tell you? How many different ways can I tell you? Okay, bye-bye, no Baba Tuna. Bye-bye. See, and then people want to shame us into having some kind of cultural affinity for Africa when y'all don't. All right? This is why y'all ain't selling the Wakanda package as good as you think you are. Y'all have this shame of your culture. And you shouldn't be. You, you, you're from where you're from, dude. You're from where you're from. And that's okay. That's tethering. You don't have to try to tether and cosplay as us. We we hear you. We can tell you're not FBA, brother. See, that's where we have a problem when people come around us trying to be slick and trying to be deceptive. You're not blending in like you think you are, brother. We can spot y'all and hear you a mile away. We can hear it in your voice. We can feel your energy. And, and look, listen. Foundational Black Americans, there's a certain energy and spirit that we have that other people just don't have. Not good, bad, right or wrong, not saying we better or nothing like that. And I'm not saying that at all. We just have a, there's a certain spirit and energy that we have that is very unique to us. You understand what I'm saying? And we can kind of feel it immediately or not feel it immediately. We can kind of tell, like, where this nigga from? You know, we can kind of tell. Just instinctively, almost through osmosis, just your energy. You, you understand? 
we can kind of tell when somebody has that FBA energy. There's a very distinct energy that we have. That's why that energy has kept us afloat the way it has. And that's why people want to latch on to that energy. Why do you think so many people are in here who are non-FBA? People want to latch on to that energy. That's why people always focus on us. Why do you think every all eyes are on us all the time? Look, look, look. Take a look at the room right now. This is the most popping room right now on Twitter space. It's one, two. It's two in the morning on the East Coast. We got over a thousand people in the room. People in here watching what Foundation of Black Americans are talking about in the middle of the night. Ain't no other Twitter space popping like this right now. We got over a thousand people in here. It ain't way over a thousand. Shit, over twelve hundred to be honest. At two o'clock in the morning, East Coast time. People are honed in on that foundational Black American energy that is very unique to us. Not saying that other people don't have their own energies, y'all, that you don't have your own collective spirits or whatever, but we have something that's extremely exceptional, that that is extremely um, magnetizing to other people who want to be around that aura. You understand? We're very exceptional people. Let me get my brother Terrain in here. Brother Terrain, Brother Terrain Walker. What's up, sir? How are you? Brother Terrain, turn the microphone on, sir. Good, Tariq. How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you, brother? I'm good, man. Tripping off this conversation I walked into like five minutes ago. That was wild, but not surprised. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They be, they be on one in here. Um, I want to bring the room back to the uh, cut to the question in the top of the space. Did Fannie Willis get pro black? Um, I'm in Atlanta right now, and I don't know if you ever saw the movie Chicago, where like there's a scene where um, there's a scene near the end of the movie where they're getting ready to pronounce the verdict, and there's a newspaper boy sitting on a stack of newspapers. One stack says innocent, the other stack says guilty, and the minute that they uh, announce the verdict, they drop the they drop the innocent stack. And it feels like everybody's coming to this situation with their own preconceived ideas because they're so invested either in this woman's identity or they're invested in what she represents that they're overlooking whatever went down between her and dude. Yeah. And it's just, you know what I mean? And it's just fascinating to see that because you, got, you see so many people who claim to be pro-black, quote unquote, but at the same time, all you're seeing is people who have issues with, you know, they either have issues with Trump or they have issues politically or they see her as a stepping stone because they, they, they identify with her and her progress as far as politically and her possibly get the cabinet post. So to me, it's just fascinating to see how people's morality flips, flops, however, however they identify with whoever's speaking, whoever's up against the bat. And I just want to say this, man. It's like, regardless of what your skin tone is, regardless of what your gender is, you got to be able to move in a certain way. You can't wild out the way other people wild out. You can't do stuff like she did and be able to think you're not going to get away with it and think Trump right. ain't going to be too big. You know what I mean? They come for blood. When you yes, indeed. yes, indeed, man. But thank you so much, brother. Oh, yes, no. Keep that going. But yeah, Fani, man, the thing, this is where Fani messed up. Fani, man, came in the door doing the bidding of the, the white supremacists. She came in there and they used her as a black face to let a cop go free after offering this brother. So she walked right into that and immediately alienated um, a lot of sectors of black society. So when they eventually turned on and then heard throwing the Rico charges on um, Young Thug and those guys, that further alienated her from the community. It's like, how are you going to drop the charges on the, the race soldier and then throw some charges on some brothers? And then, and then when they turned on her, she's up there again talking about, oh, y'all are not going to emasculate the black man. Now she's talking about the black man. Man. Uh, we needed justice for the black man who got off by the race soldier. And when she was in a position to do something, she um, bumbled the case deliberately. I don't want to hear her talk about the, the black man. No, Fani. When Fani was out here paying her dick tabs, no, she thought she was in there. She's going to get all that money and um, pay her dick tab and have dudes flying all around the world, tearing up that bad shape and, and, Tricking off a little money on cats. And then the white supremacists then turned on her. 
and now she's all sassy and black. <laughs> she, she's sassier than ever. You don't get to ask me nothing, sucker. Eyes talk when I wants to talk, chump. No, nah, no, 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 Fani. I'm cool. Um, Harry, let's get this Harry person in here. Um, Harry, Mr. Harry, hop on, sir. Because we are in here heavy. And by the way, um, we have an event out here in LA at the Hidden History Museum, um, 2131 West Jefferson Boulevard. We have a um, one year anniversary event next Saturday, February 24th. We're going to have free food, free drinks, great music, great comics. Y'all got to come on out for the celebration. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com to get your tickets, to RSVP, to come on down and join us and have a good time. Harry, hop on, sir. How's it going, man? I appreciate it. Uh, if we could briefly bring it back to the uh, Aboriginal conversation, which I don't think really wrapped up sufficiently. Um, is it true that white people invented the didgeridoo? The who? Is it true that white people invented the didgeridoo? What's the didgeridoo? You don't know the didgeridoo, that long instrument that uh, the aboriginals play. It's got like a deep tone. I'm surprised you don't know. Um, I don't know what that is, sir. And what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Not much. I mean, probably... No, probably not do much. You I do, have one. do you have a didgeridoo in your room with you right now, sir? No, I was actually going to ask a similar question. I was going to, not exactly, but like if you've ever played one, if you've ever seen it, but you didn't know what it was, so. Boy, y'all 4chan people, the wit. I just wanted to know if you played it. It's like the main, like That's people know it, three it, things it, about it, Aboriginal it, people and one of them is a the didgeridoo. Okay. Okay. Um, from what I understand, that's an African instrument. My, my guy just texted me and said it's an African instrument. And I think there's a rumor it was invented by whites. I'm not sure. Oh, no. I'm no, not what, saying that that's true. I'm saying that now why would, why many would, why, people are saying why, this. Why would white people invent uh, an Aboriginal um, um, instrument? I don't know. That's what was so interesting. That's what and, and I wanted by, to talk to you about. By the way, where are whites Aboriginal too? Europe. <laughs> No, they're Northern not. Northern hinterland. Okay. <laughs> What's the... Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. No, I know this one. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. No. Uh, I'm just talking about archaeology. Um, no. Some of the... When you dig up archaeology in Europe, you see people like the Grimaldi. These are like some black people that was up there in Europe. So where are white people indigenous to? I'm not sure. You really threw me off. I don't know if that's not the case. I mean, we have to come from somewhere. I mean, I don't know if it's Jacob's lab or anything else, but I don't think you subscribe to that theory. But, uh, I mean, indigenous means you're from somewhere. So where was the first white people were? I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you've been just kind of a nomadic thing. So that's why I'm saying, why, where, would, <laughs> where would you create an indigenous instrument when, you, when Europe was basically a bunch of roaming tribes all over the place? They didn't really get settled uh. until relatively recent, you know? You are good at yeah, good at this. Yeah, where are white people from? I don't know. Nomadic. That was good. Yeah, um, yeah. They, they okay. were just kind of I have one around. other question. I have one other question. I'm sorry. Or, or I'm sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. I'll let you finish. Right. I'm just saying. I'm just talking history. Y'all were they were just kind of roaming around in different tribes. Yeah. Uh, Europe Drifters, then, vagrants, things of that ilk. No, no, not saying that. No, we, you know, people got caught in that ice age and in the caves, and it was a whole thing. But what what else is on you? Yeah. Okay. Else? Um. Is it true that George Washington Carver invented the first computer out of a peanut? No, 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 no. You, you got that mistaken. No, he got, he invented, he used soybean to create the first black vibrator that a white woman used. <laughs> that, right. Okay, that was, you know what, now that I think about it. But yeah, come on now, you got you to learn the history, all right? I know. I, I appreciate you uh, giving me the time, and I appreciate the knowledge that you imparted. All right. Thank you so much. All, All right, right. Take care, man. All right. <laughs> Let me get some more people in here. All right. Come on with that. Right. Oh, we got somebody from Gab. Uh-oh. 
We got well, speaking of Gab, I mentioned Gab earlier. We got somebody from Gab. That's the OG. That's the white supremacist um headquarters right there. Um America, whatever your name is. <clears throat> Hop on, man. How's it going, Turk? What's up, brother? Now what now what's your name again, sir? Uh, uh my handle is uh, American Muslims. American Muslims. So yeah. so what part of the Middle East are you from originally? Uh, Palestine. Palestine, okay. And what what made you become a Palestinian suspected white supremacist? I'm not a I'm not a white supremacist. Suspected. I'm not saying you are. Suspect. <laughs> and I suspect because you have a Gab account, and that's usually populated by white supremacists. So I suspect that you could be. I'm not saying you are, sir. Oh, uh, I mean, if you click on it, I don't have any posts on there. Somebody told me to open one up. Uh, in case I get uh, suspended on on Twitter or on got X, it. got it, got it. Uh, so, what's on your mind, Mister American Muslim? Well, I had a question for you about um, Middle East and foreign policy, uh, especially because uh, so much of our foreign policy is uh, based on the Middle East. But before that, I was wondering: uh, Are you a Democrat? Do you consider yourself uh, liberal? No, no, I'm I'm pro. Black empowerment. So whoever is going to give me some tangibles, that's who I go with. I'm not a Democrat, nor am I a Republican nice. at all. I don't lean towards either one, man. So um, go ahead. Proceed. Cool. Uh, so uh, in 2022, uh, the U.S. spent $1.7 trillion on uh, foreign policy. Uh, another $1 trillion went to uh, uh Feed, uh, feed the military industrial complex, right? And uh, when you look at what our foreign policy is aimed towards, it's mostly the Middle East. Uh, I, I would think it was like 90 something percent is towards the Middle East. And uh, most of the operations that we've been doing in the Middle East for the last 20 years uh, really revolved around Israel. Uh, it's the reason we went to Iraq. Um, it's the reason we bombed Libya and uh, uh, other countries, Syria. So uh, I was wondering, and I saw this on a on a tweet that you had a while back, like three months ago. Why are you indifferent with Israel when it comes to the Israeli Palestine issue? Since we seem to throw so much money at them, and yet it takes. I mean, we got to pry fingers here just to get some money for black communities or any community within the country. So why am I indifferent? I'm indifferent because I'm focusing on us getting the money because, yeah, we're not getting the money. We're still prying. We ain't getting nothing. So that's my focus. That's why I'm indifferent to that. I'm, I want the the some of the money that we pay taxes to. I want that to help foundational black Americans. But don't you think part of that fight is to stop letting that money go out the country and reroute it back into our communities. Right, right. I don't want it to go nowhere. You're focused on Israel and Palestine, but yeah, there's money going to the Ukraine and money going to um, Central America and South America. I don't want it going nowhere. You understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, the reason I point out Israel so much, and again, obviously I have a bias because uh, my parents were born there, but you know, when you look at the 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 before ukraine because ukraine has taken up the bulk of the money now but before ukraine uh the bulk of the money did go to israel and it was geared towards israeli policies okay uh, it's still that's a distinction without a difference the money is going everywhere except our pockets that's where i want the money to go i want us to get funds allocated towards Nation of Black Americans because we need help because we've been targeted with economic deprivation more than any group. So you pointing out all of these other groups who's getting money, yes, that I don't want that to go nowhere but to us. So I don't know what the point is of just singling out one country. I don't know what the point of that is, sir. It's because that one country gets more than all the other countries combined. Don't matter. Removing all of Ukraine. Ukraine gets it. All of these other groups get it. Biden, they're always throwing money to all these other groups. So it doesn't matter. I just want it to go to us. That's why I'm indifferent to all of that stuff, because it's all the same. It ain't us. 
The money's going to somebody who ain't us. Don't matter who, it's just not us. That's all I need to know. When they say, hey, we got a gazillion dollars that we're going to spend with the U.S. tax dollars, my first question, are we getting some of it? Well, no, it's, well, uh, all right. Call me when you're giving it to us. I don't even want to, I don't even care what they're doing with it because they're not giving it to us. You see? Yeah, I see. I see. All right. Well, thank you so much, sir. All right. Thank you for having me. Okay, that was a long nothing burger. All right, who cares? Uh, if, if they're not giving it to us, I don't give a damn about all that stuff, to be honest. All right, well, we got some characters in here. This dude, let's get the dog emperor. Some of these pictures are funny. I'm just picking some of y'all based on your, your, your profile pictures. All right, and then we'll get um, Hannah, Hannah Parody. We got a, a lot of new faces in here. All right, the Dog Emperor, and then Perla. Tariq, what's good, brother? What's going on, Dog Emperor? Dude, my guy, you are hilarious. Have you ever thought of doing stand-up? No, no, I just do me, man. I'm just, you know, I'm just being myself, chopping it up with the family and just enjoying life. Now, wh where are you from? Your, your picture on your fucking page is funny, man. Thank That's you, why brother. I'm, I'm from Kentucky. There you go. What part of Kentucky? Well, I, I really don't want to say because I got people trying to dox me all the time, you know, so I'm going to not really give out my coordinates. You know what I mean? Right, because we don't want nobody sabotaging that trailer. Um, how far are you? That's how far are you? How far are you from Olsley County? I like I said, I'm, I'm not going to give up my you know information. People okay. are trying to kill me all the time. So, okay, yeah, that fentanyl is a joke, boy. It's not no joke. But yeah, you're probably in Olsley County. That's the welfare capital of the world, Olsley County, Kentucky. You know. All right, yeah, you nailed it. You got me. You got me. I'm from. Olsley. So what's on your mind? So what's on your mind, dog? What's no, dog? I, I, I think you are like one of the wittiest guys on here. You got the quips. Like, have you ever seen the show Kill Tony? No, what's that about? It's a comedy show. Like, they do, like, they get comedians to come up and they do a minute. It's great. They've got, like, a bunch of great comedians. There's this one black kid, Cam Patterson. He's fucking hilarious. And I think you would do phenomenal on it. You're, like, you remind me of, like, Richard Pryor meets Gallagher, except instead of smashing watermelons, you're eating them. Oh, that was clever. That was a good one. That was a good one. Thank you. Man. Thank you. You see, we got wit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to update the stereotypes because watermelon is actually very good. I don't know why you white supremacists think that that's a that's a negative. Watermelon doesn't. That's not a bad insult. Watermelon no, is actually watermelon is delicious and healthy. And you're sitting over there eating mayonnaise and smoking meth. That's where the the health problems come. Shit. So our stereotypes aren't that bad compared to yours, sir. I'm I'm buying three sticks of that deodorant. I'm telling you right now. I promise you, I will. Now, do you use any kind of product like after having to wash your ass when Jared Taylor Buck broke you? Oh no no. Are you guy? Are you still mad that I ran your white supremacist zaddy off the internet? I think I think Jared did a good job. You should debate no. Nick Fuentes next. You should go no, after no. Nick Fuentes next. You guys have been butt hurt and bussy hurt because I ran your white supremacist zaddy off the internet. I, I think Jared beat your ass, but that's no, just my didn't. opinion. No, you could come no, visit you, me. No no no. You know good and well I gave Jared Taylor the business, and he became a non-factor when Black Daddy got a hold of him. So we, we put him in his place, and that bothered a lot of you white supremacists. You're at home throwing your meth pipes at the mirror, mad, playing John Cougar Millencamp records, cursing yourselves and beating your women. All right. Okay, so, okay. Before I go, before I go, I got a uh, name for Buck Broken 2. Okay. Yeah, Buck Breaking 2 is coming. We do have Buck Breaking 2 coming. All right. Let's get, um. Wait, where's the lady? We have the lady up here. Okay, Miss um, Perla, you did you want to get on, ma'am or sir? It might be a dude catfishing. I don't know, but Perla, I, I had you ready to go, and then we had um, the that guy. He was trying his wit out. Perla, you good? Turn your microphone on. All right, Perla, if you turn your microphone on, that would be great. All right, while we're waiting on you to do that, let's get um. Uh, well, we got a lot of folks in here. So many people in here. 
All right, let's get um, let's get the mm -hmm. great. Okay, let's get the great top rank. All right, Perla, you got five seconds to get on, and I'm gonna just take you down, and then we'll get um the great. And Perla, all you have to do is unmute your mic if you want to get on. All right, you don't want to get on, and let me take you out the request, man. All right, uh, the great, hop on. What's going on, my brother? What's going on, DeGrate? Uh, I'm starting to think the fact that we starting to delineate and forcing everybody else to get get rid of all these categories is forcing everybody to really seek out who they is. And all the black people in other countries, they want their land back, just like us. Right. And, and it's scaring them, so I land my plane there. I thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, Ascari, Ascari, hop on. Yeah, hello, uh, Tonic Nishida. Hello, Ascari. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing great today. I'm just, you know, cooking food. Now, where are you from? Where, 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 that accent, where are you from? Oh, Australia. A lot of Australian people in here tonight. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay, cooking this uh, diet from Sobra, so... The diet mainly consists of like a dead liver baby that you harvest off the juice. Uh, okay, so okay, I can't hear you, sir. I can't hear you. Are you sure? Okay. Uh, okay, you have, you have to hold on slow down, sir, because you got all types of sounds going on, sir. All right, my bad. I'm okay. next to my router not right now, so hopefully you can hear me. I don't so, know what you're saying, sir. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Right. You're, I can't understand you. We can't understand you. Just slow down. Let's take it and slow down. All right. Now, can you hear me? Are you from East Africa, sir? Ah, oh, East Africa, yeah. Originally? Initially, yeah. What part, Eritrea or Somalia? Uh, I think you should take a guess, mate. Sir, this ain't let's make a deal. Where, where, where are you from? Uh, from Ethiopia. Okay, there you go. Um, yeah, there are a no, lot actually, of Ethiopia. But, but hold on, hold on. I'm from Ethiopia, but I'm from this place called Aromia. And so what we're doing right now in support of our, you know, black kings and queens in America. Uh, you know, we support Harakat and Shabab and Mujahideen. You know, we support the black queens over there who are fighting against, you know, the Somalians, those, those bastard Somalians. So, yeah. Okay. So what are you over there cooking, sir? You said you were cooking something. Oh, yeah. So right now what I'm cooking is this diet from Solbra, and it basically consists of, like, this off the Juba River, down south of Jilib. So it mainly consists of, like, spices from, you know... That's uh, not witty. That's not witty. Come on, you got to work on... No, 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 I'm being serious. I, I, don't, not, I don't know what you're talking that, about, man. That's not witty. Yo, yo, anti-black racist, you got to work on your wit. Let, let me give you another try. Let me... Come, that that failed. All right, let's, let's give another try of wit. Let's try another one. All right, because now, now you try to do the shock factor. And that doesn't work in these spaces. The shock factor doesn't work because it's it's outdated. Just to say some shocking and trollish. It's no, too I'm, being, I'm being serious, mate. No, no, I, I don't, I'm not trying to... No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. My, my guy said you sound like a Somalian trying to claim Ethiopia. So you're Som you're definitely from East Africa. And and I, I want the FBA family to listen to this. This is an East African. All right? And listen to the ideologies. And then people wonder why we ain't on that Pan-African vibe right now. Okay? Then they wonder why. I want y'all to listen to why. Now, go ahead. Let me give you another attempt at your wit. Go ahead, Ascari. Go ahead. No, I seriously do support, you know, foundational no. black Africans, you know, in their fight. So I've got, you know, Fred Hampton. Or uh, can you... Newton. Or, or, or can you can you can you get your meerkat from rubbing up against the phone? It keeps rubbing. I can't hear you. Put the meerkat in the cage so I can hear you better, sir. Hello. Go, go, go ahead, hawk me. Go ahead, hawk me. Go ahead. All right, all right. So can you hear me? Hundred percent. There you go. That's great. You took off. Right. You, you took all the right. earphones off. I don't all have right. earphones at all, but yeah. So I'm from this place called Aromia. So we just got like these cannibalistic pagans here, you know. Right. And and speaking of Aromia, the Aromia from your underarms means that we do ship root work internationally. So that aroma 
that's coming from under them arms of yours, we can ship root work internationally. It'll take a couple of days to get to your village, okay? But we do ship internationally. Now, when it gets there, it might have a zebra bite on it or some shit, but it will get there. So you can order and get international shipping. But go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Um, I'm just, while you were talking, I was just eating the abdomen. Right. I couldn't really hear that much. I was just chewing it. So. That that fell flat. That that fell flat, sir. But go ahead. Go ahead. That fell flat. But go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Hakmeed. Hakmeed, go ahead. Okay. Sorry, you're um, muting me. I should never yeah. Know. yeah, yeah, your wit. Ain't. I'm trying to give you an opportunity to give me some better wit. I respect some good wit, but now you're just saying the same failed joke over and over that just failed. And you've been hanging around too many white boys. All right. So what else do we have going on? Let's get, um, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me see who we, are. we got. We got a lot of, raise your hand if you want to get on. Let's get, uh, we got a lot of folks in here tonight. Raise your hand if you're ready. Raise your hand if you're ready. Let's get Frog. And, but we are over 1,200 people in this room in the middle of the night. I love it. A lot of white supremacists. Nigger slides don't matter. Nigger slides don't matter. Nigger slides do not matter, bro. On God. Nigger slides do not matter, bro. On God. Now, why don't we matter? Why don't niggers matter? Because you're a nigger, bro. That's what you are. Same with me, bro. Like, on God. Like, nigger slides do not matter. You know? is what it is. You but it, know? But it, it matters to white pussy because y'all No, it doesn't. You pick cotton nigger. all day. That's all you did. You didn't pick cotton. Well, pick the cotton of white panties from white pussy. Yeah. That's what brothers pick. White cotton panties of white pussy. And is that the thing that got you mad, right? Cotton panties with white pussy. <clears throat> is that why you upset, sir? Your side don't matter. They... I'm sorry, they do now not matter. You... That's... Now, now, let's... now, why are you upset? Let's talk. Let's have an intervention. Now, why are you upset? Said, I'm just saying why they you don't so... matter, bro. I understand. Now, why are you so upset with the I'm not upset. I'm just saying they don't matter. Bro. Like, it's matter the metal. Wait, we, we do matter. You... You know, we conquered the land, you know, while you people... Real... Oh, okay. Oh, good. We... We now we who because you sound like poor white trash. Now what we, do you, because, no, I'm so we black because you know y'all black people you know y'all you know don't really we have too much things pay cotton and just you neck. Sir, you, you came people, from you people. Sir. That's what you do, bro. That's what you fucking do, bro. Pay cotton. Sir. That's all you fucking do, bro. Like on God. Sir, you came from the slums of Europe. What did you what did you build? <laughs> Go ahead, sir. You came from the slums of Europe. You're saying we. What did you build, sir? Let me hear. It. Let's hear some of these hillbilly inventions that you created. Oh, white is just better, bro. We conquered the world, bro. We created everything. We created Christianity. I mean, you created Christianity? Uh, yes, nigga. Because Christ was white, bro. Like on God, He was white. You know. Okay, so why are you sitting at home alone, bitchless, with a pipe? In your trailer, if you create. Hey, listen here. I'm celibate for Christ. I'm celibate for Christ, actually, you know, as Christ would, you know, Christ is celibate as much as I am. So, you know, so Christ, technically doing a good thing here. So, you know. So, Christ is your boy toy. That's what your your homeboy name is. No, he's not. You sound very anti Christian. I'm not going to lie, Tariq. I'm not going to lie. You sound okay. very anti Christian, you know. Okay. You all so, sound like a nigger, too, on God. Like, you sound like a nigger, too, you know. So. What, what does a nigger sound like? Tell me what, what does a nigger sound like? Just now, you just go ahead. Just now, what? Come on now, let's come on now. I know that you're not that creative. You sound like a nigger. What, what is that? What you what, sound like right now, bro? Like, like what? Like describe what a nigger sounds like. You're talking like one right now, bro. Like on God, but you sound like a nigger right now. Defining, you're not defining it though. You're not defining. You're just saying you're saying. But you're being an example of one though, aren't you? Uh, you're not defining you're an example of one, right? Exactly. What constitutes talking like a nigger? I don't know what that means. Right now, you're talking one like bro. You're talking like one right now, bro. How? Because you you're trying to. Niggers are fucking retarded, bro. This nigger is right here, is bro. Like, but you sound like a nigger right now, bro. How how does that? What does a nigger sound like? Right now, that's what you're talking like right now, bro. Like these niggers are low IQ, bro. Like your IQ must be eighty six, bro. Like on God, it must. Be. And why do you you're, you're saying the same thing over and over like a woman? So 
because you act like a fucking nigger, bro. Like, on God. So, and why are you using black slang? I'm not using black slang. You just act like a nigger. That's what you are. But you're yelling nigger, but you keep using black slang. You keep kind of trying to get the personification of a black person. That's interesting. Because you act like a nigger. That's what you are. But you're trying. Like, for but real. aren't you trying to act like one by using all of that black slang? So is that somebody over there being jelly? I'm calling you nigger because you are a nigger. That's well, it's not you like are, you're bro, jealous you know? that you can't be one. Right? Nigga, I'm not jealous, what? bro. You, you're a nigger and it is what I it mean, is. Why you are know? you using all of this black hood? Because that's what you are, bro. It sounds like you're fantasizing. Are you in the mirror looking at what? You're in the mirror naked look- Okay, now you're gay. Now you're a fag, bro. I'm not God. You, you're, you're a whole Are fag, you in the bro. mirror looking at your little purple pee pee mad at yourself, sir? Okay. Now this right here is just kind of gay. Is that what it is, sir? You sound like you have some you you have some self hate issues there, sir. He he left. I didn't I didn't get him out. I didn't get him out. But he he's he's having some issues with himself. He keeps trying to sound like a black person. What did I tell you about that FBA energy that we have that people like that want to have? They just don't have it. They try to get our inflections. They try to get that FBA energy and spirit. They just can't get it. And that really frustrates them. You don't have that energy and that spirit that we have. That's why you're sitting up here trying to talk like a black person and project all of these weird things and trying to use this corny troll wit. Uh, That trolling, there's a lot of pain behind that. That's why when you talk to them, they start sounding kind of sad and they start breaking down a little bit. You know, when when they see the trolling don't work, just yelling something goofy and trollish, that don't really work. When you talk to them, you know, they sound weird. They sound like there's some pain there. And I get it. We're having an intervention in here. We're having a white supremacist intervention. We're helping the white supremacists out to help them cope with themselves. Let's get some more people in here. Raise your hand if you're ready to get on. Because we got a lot of folks. Man, we got the poppinest space on Twitter right now. It's in the middle of the night. It's three in the morning on the East Coast. And everybody's in here deep right now. Let's see them hands. Let's get them hands up. I ain't tired. I drank some ginseng earlier. I'm up. All right, let's get, um, all right, Ace. Did I have you on already, Ace? I thought I had Ace on, but I get Ace on again. I, I thought I had you on. Two questions, two quick questions. Go ahead, Ace. Sure. Um, would you ever I, IRL have like a conversation with a white supremacist like Richard Spencer? I've talked to Richard Spencer a few times. He's called into a couple of my broadcasts before. I've talked to him before. What about like publicly, like in a forum, like a, an event put on? Like a exchange of ideas. No, that's possible. The bag has to be right. It has to be a nice bag on it. Um, they, um, no jumper, tried to do that. They wanted to have that's me. Right. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to have me and some other white supremacists in there, but they didn't get the bag like I wanted it. So, but yeah, yeah, we get the bag right. We'll have that popping. Oh, fantastic. We'll make some phone calls. Uh, the second one is uh, a dating advice, real quick, a specific one, if you don't mind me asking. Go ahead, Ace. I've been thinking about trying to date a black woman, and I was just curious if you had any tips of how to go about that. Oh, tip number one, go to rootworkstyle.com. Um, Rootwork, got it? Go there now. Go to Rootwork Yeah, give me Style. one sec. Let me pull up my laptop. Yeah. What was that again? Rootworkstyle.com. All right, one sec. Okay, go to Rootworkstyle. Rootworkstyle.com or .org? Yeah. No, no, that's the, dot com. Oh, works. excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you, let me know when you're on the page. Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. Now, what do you see? I see a black man uh, with the shirt off. Yep. And scroll down. 
All right. I'm a little concerned. I, uh, I've never been on this website. I don't know if you're trolling me right now. No, 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 no. Go down. Go down. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We got this, like deodorant? deodorant. Yes. Yes. So that's number one. We're going to get you some mm. deodorant. Get you some deodorant. Um, what part of the country are you in? Uh, I'm in California. Okay. California. I would suggest the citrus charm or the pure vanilla for you. Get that <laughs> first. All right. Pure we got to get that. We, we got to get that trailer scent off you, whatever that. <laughs> And we can't have that. The sisters don't want that. All oh, right. I like it. All right. So number one, get that root work deodorant. All right. And also, when you get with a sister, you're gonna have to get that bag right because if it's an FBA sister, it depends on what kind of sister you want. Mm. If 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 it's a foundational Black American sister, she's gonna pat your pockets. You're gonna have to break bread. She's gonna hit you for about fifty thousand dollars. She's gonna get you for some bread. FBA sisters, they got a mouthpiece. They ain't gonna be with a white boy unless they get a real big bag out of it. Now, if you want a foreign woman, okay, that's relatively easy. Uh, yeah, you can go down. Well, just hell, you can get an Uber driver to come through and just holler at them and then just invite them in the house and they'll come on in, whatever you need. So, yeah, it's easy. Just, you know, and just love who you love. All right. But just keep that root work deodorant on. All right. All right. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, we got a lot of phenomenal people in here tonight. Man. The frog guy, Fashodo. What's up, Fashodo? I see the the frog meme, so you must be one of them 4chan dudes. Fashodo, what's up, man? Hop on. Hey. Hey, Tariq. How you doing? I'm good, Fashodo. How are you? I'm pretty good. I just wanted to, you know, real quick apologize for calling you a nigger last time. Uh, I didn't mean that, you know. It's all I didn't. Even remember when did you call me a nigger? Um, I called you a nigger, hard R, but you know, I apologize for that. But I just wanted to say, you know, I was wrong about that. You know, you taught us, now, you taught us white men. No, you taught what? us, you taught us white people, you know, about washcloths and all that. I'm, I don't I'm remember. To, I'm about to get on root works right now. Oh, oh, slow down, sir. All right, slow down, slow, slow down, sir. All right, slow down, calm down. All right, I I just slow it down for a minute. You're not at a mayonnaise factory. You just can't just go run amok. I'm trying to remember what you're talking about. I don't. I never spoken with you before, and I'm pretty. I know my white supremacists. I don't remember you, sir. But what else is on your mind? What else? Is there? Now it sounds like you're about to prepare to do some flat falling wit. But no, you about root works is on my mind. I need to get that lavender. I need to get right. I need to be smelling want, good. It ain't going to work on you, brother. I think it, it will, it, man. I think it will. I get that lavender. I'm not I'm not feeling the vanilla, man. I'm not going lavender, straight lavender. No, the lavender and wet dog don't go together. It's not going to work. I'm telling you, it, it's going to clash. The sense will clash. That pure vanilla is going to help you out. That that wet dog Michelob smell, it'll cover all of that up. It's that pure vanilla. Trust me. Trust me now. Believe me later on. That vanilla smell is going to work for you, sir. And also... Because a lot of you suspected white supremacists are getting my um, getting the deodorant, so you guys have gotten a liking to it. I'm, I got another scent that we're working on. It's called Midnight Mayonnaise, and that's really gonna work wonders with your sweat glands, dude. That Midnight Mayonnaise is gonna be specifically for you guys, and I'm telling you, it's, it, it has a whole good energy that you guys are really gonna appreciate. All right, so to turn your microphone on. For Soto, for Shoto, whatever, man. Um, for Shoto, did you? I didn't. I don't have you muted, sir. All right, for Shoto. I think his gerbil fell on the phone and muted it. Put that gerbil up and wash it off before you put it back in the cage. All right, because that that gerbil is gonna get hepatitis being all up in your pussy like that. All right, let's get, um, <laughs> let's get somebody else. Uh, let's see who else we got. Uh, raise your hand, people. Get ready to ignite the spirit of Black History Month like never before. 
Join us at the Hidden History Museum in the heart of Los Angeles for an electrifying one-year anniversary celebration, Saturday, February 24th, 2024, at 7 p.m. Mark your calendars for an unforgettable evening. Experience our comedy show with a stellar lineup of the hottest new comedians, hosted by Tariq Nasheed and Dwan B. But that's not all. Indulge in complimentary food and drinks and music that will keep you grooving all night long. This exclusive event is by RSVP only, so don't miss out on the celebration of a lifetime. Reserve your spot now by visiting HiddenHistoryMuseum.com for tickets. Let's honor and celebrate Black History Month in style. See you there! <laughs>